welcome to the No Name Podcast. Um, we're back after a brief hiatus. Very brief. Brief being seven months. <laughs> it's not a year, so... Yeah. Yeah. That's brief. True. All right. So, um, today we have a bit of a weird episode because I was tasked with coming up with the idea. So, <laughs> I just chose something that I like to talk about and I find interesting. So... To start this off, Daniel, is there any, like, weird folklore or, like, creature sightings around your area? Um, we have more ghost stories than we have creature sightings, if I remember correctly. That makes sense. <laughs> there's, there's, yeah, there's just a lot more, uh, I mean, I remember this specific ghost story just because I was bored and looked it up because I happened to live there at the time. But there's not a whole lot of monster stories that I'm aware of. More ghosts, because there's a lot more a lot more structures than that. Right, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So, oddly enough, I don't really have any either. Uh, because despite living basically in the country, um, I didn't have contact with, like, normal people. So... Things might have been odd, but I didn't know. The closest thing we had is uh, the Church of Ramtha, which, if you've heard of Scientology, it's that, but way weirder and way more concerning. Um, and it was explain, just this... Explain, explain. So, so, do you know the basics of Scientology? Uh, kind of. Okay. Not really. So... So if I remember correctly, what it is, is that there was this woman, and by the way, this is near where I lived, like I drove past this on the regular to get into town. So there's this woman from my state, Washington, and she one day says, yo, so hear me out, my name is Jay-Z Knight, and I've been... You know, I'm channeling the spirit of this 3,000... No, sorry. How many years is it? I don't know. It's like a really old spirit, and she's like, Look, I'm channeling the spirit. Which, first of all, if anyone comes up to you and says, Hey, I'm channeling a spirit, leave. <laughs> Just leave. Yeah, sure. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> Whatever they want after that, it's not good. And I'm not saying that on a spiritual level or anything. That's just not a statement you want to interact with. You will rarely find <laughs> someone who's going to say something Talk normal. About first impressions, like, like, hey, my name is Joe. Hey, my name is uh, whatever the name of the spirit is that I'm channeling. And they're like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, so 35,000 year old conqueror war warrior from the lost continent of Lumeria, which only vaguely sounds like a fantasy story. Because it is. That makes vaguely. no sense. <laughs> <laughs> 35,000 years. <laughs> from a lost continent. You know, lost Continents. continents. Not just a country. Yeah. Just a country, but a whole stinking continent. And imagine, imagine just losing a continent. Like, yeah, it's just imagine, losing it. Like, oh, don't know where it went, guys. Sorry. <laughs> That's why the world is 70% water. Exactly. There used to be a lot more land. It used yeah. to be 50-50, but now it just poofed. Yeah, There's but then we lost it. There. We don't know where it went. <laughs> it's just water now. Yeah. So basically, if I remember correctly, uh, the site isn't really telling me, but if I remember correctly, uh, first of all, it was a scam. Uh, you had to turn over like all of your property to her. Um, as I don't think it was as soon as you joined, but as you got up, the entire idea was like, well, you should focus on your academics or religious study, spiritual, I don't really understand it. So I'll I'll use your property. Give your property to me and I'll handle it. Once again, concerning statement. If anyone says that, leave. <laughs> Cause Yeah. Kind not of good. Sus, not gonna lie. So the way I understand it, and I could be completely off here, but if I remember correctly, 
it was this entire idea of like there's aliens and they're trying to read your mind um what hey where have i heard that before hmm. <laughs> yeah so totally original idea hmm yeah so um also um you could do things to like help enlighten yourself like drinking wine or smoking tobacco which is very enlightening it's like yeah. you want to see new colors i can help you in that education try acid like yeah <laughs> but that's not really an education <laughs> This just sounds like hedonism. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> this was the weird thing, because you could actually see this around uh, my town, is you would put these, like, specific rocks in the, your front yard in, like, this very particular shape. It was weird, and you'd see it all over the place. And as well as you could see, like, tin-lined roofs, because, you know, mind readers can't get through tin. Which I still don't understand oh, to this day. Wait, what? Oh, so it's like Superman... And not being able to see through lead. Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> it's like, does it make sense? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> but... What in the world? So, yeah. Man. So it was weird. It wasn't really like folklore. It was mostly just a new age religion that most people understood was pretty weird and kind of like <laughs> strange. But a lot of people I in the area. I don't know who that one sucker is who actually bought into that. Yeah, like they had a whole. Do they have a out. name on this woman? Do they know who she is? Uh, yeah, Jay Z Knight. Jay Z Knight. Yeah. Is that her actual name, or is that what she called herself as part of this spirit channeling? I believe that's her legal name, and I love the Wikipedia entry for this because it's just the most sus thing ever. Judy Zebra, Jay Z Knight, is an American spiritual teacher and author, known for her purported channeling of a spiritual entity named Ramtha. Like, yeah, that's that's normal. <laughs> Wait, is this Jay-Z Knight with a K? Uh, yes. This broad is 75? Yeah, this this happened, uh, like, a while ago. Like, uh... Oh, her birthday was three days ago. Nice. <laughs> huh. I don't... Ramtha. I don't care. Ram Ramtha. What? Yeah, it's... It was a weird what? story. So basically, she's channeling the spirit of... The God, because it's not just God, of course, but there's no, there's like no specific God. It's just the God. Yeah. Ramtha, Ramtha. It, it's kind of weird because she was also heavily criti critical. The four cornerstones of Knight's philosophy are <laughs> the statement, "You are God." I like how they phrase that, not the fact, the statement, just the words. <laughs> <laughs> You are God. That's all. <laughs> you are God. The directive to make known the unknown. Yes, that's a directive. That's an yeah, order. Sir. That's an order. You, this is your general speaking. This is an order. You have to make the unknown known. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. The concept the con of consciousness and energy. Create the nature of reality. Sorry, the lag is a little bad right now. That's okay. Yeah, and then four, the challenge to conquer yourself. Which I thought you were God. Whatever that means. Yeah. <laughs> I like how that comes after it, too. <laughs> like, if it came before, it'd be like, oh, okay, you have to, like, conquer your human nature. No, no, no. You have to conquer your <laughs> godly nature. Once again, weird. <laughs> I also I also love how oh she was gosh. highly critical of Christianity, calling it backward, and then was like, "Yo, I met this guy who is thirty five thousand years old. I think his teachings are very progressive." <laughs> like, uh, there's so this is the kind of people that it's like I want to know what's going on in their heads, but at the same time, I really don't want to know what their headspace is like. Yeah, or other concerning things, like, quote, 
Murder isn't really wrong or evil if one believes in reincarnation. Like, um... <laughs> what? No. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think that's true anywhere. I don't think people who believe in reincarnation necessarily believe that. Oh my gosh. It was just... Uh, it was weird. I... Oh, wait, here we go. Yeah, the lizard people. Right. Rafa yeah. had declared HIV in nature's way is nature's way of getting rid of homosexuality. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I will say, I find these people funny because they just say the most unhinged stuff. And I find it hilarious. It, like, it's objectively terrible. And they scam people out of their money. But it's just hilarious how unhinged they are. Yeah, on a serious <laughs> note, this stuff is, like, pretty evil, but at the same time, I just can't help but laugh at this all. Yeah, exactly. It's just too stupid to take this seriously. Right, and this is, like, weird, because it doesn't really hit you. Because, once again, I drove past the place where this was happening really regularly, and I never thought about it. And it's really weird that, like, stuff like this just exists out in the public. And just kind of there. This like, happened weird. in the... This happened... They said She says that Ramtha first appeared to her in the kitchen in 1977. So this is, like... This is ages ago. Yeah, it is. And she, she's still stinking alive. She's homophobic, anti-Catholic... Anti-Semitic anti and racist. Oh, yeah. wow, she's the whole nine yards, huh? She's just anti-everything. Yeah, she's just anti. <laughs> she, she is anti. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and there's a bunch she, of, like, scandals and stuff that happen, but that stuff's actually kind of saddening, so I don't like to pay attention to that, because I just... Yeah, I just find it funny to be like, yo, Christianity is backwards. Let's listen to this guy from 35,000 years ago. Who I don't even, like, most people don't even know of because 35,000 years ago. Yeah, right. You also just have to take my word that this is happening. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, sure, mate. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I wish there was more interesting stories like that in Cali, or even around my city. And maybe there are, and I just haven't, like, paid attention to it or nothing. But I know I know of more ghost stories than I do this kind of thing. Do you want to share a ghost story? So my I... stories aren't nearly as interesting. They're just, they're just like, stuff you tell around the campfire because it's weird. But, oh, it, but it's kind of funny to me because I've actually been to the place where this has, like, supposedly happened. Because mm -hmm. um, it's actually... It, um, so where I used to live, um, there was this old uh, mill of sorts, about a mile down. And, like, I used to bike around this neighborhood all the time. I had the whole neighborhood memorized, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then I expanded outside the neighborhood and pretty much memorized the entire city just by biking around it. Like, I would go to the library by myself. I would go uh, just anywhere. Like, I know the place inside and out. And so there's this mill that's um, down this side street that comes out of the old town. Um, and it's adjacent to my neighborhood. I could walk the, from there in, like, I don't know, seven minutes. And this this mill, um, I don't even know what it was used for, but it was, like, um, this... Um, apparent, supposedly there was this story about uh, a girl in a, in a like specifically like sharp blue dress that would just stand out from this window way up high in the mill and this is like this mill was like I can't remember if it was technically burned down or anything but the whole the whole demeanor of it is like really off-putting because the, um, like it's supposed to be white concrete but it's blackened all over mm-hmm um, and like, and like the logos that it used the, for the company that it used to belong to is barely even there. Um, but way up high are these like three little windows that they're not like windows either. They're like openings in the concrete. It's, it's kind of like this 
um, I don't know, some kind of fantastic. It looks like a, a a building out of a fantasy where it's um, just this big this big building that's like old old and gray and such. Um, and so supposedly there was this girl that would just stand out there every night and like sing once a week or something, and people would try to figure out how. <laughs> door opens screaming door closes yeah. <laughs> I think I think my brother just lost a tooth um, so good it's brother. fine <laughs> yeah um, so yeah it, it, it's not like it's not a very well put together ghost story but I'm looking it up right now Marietta actually I should censor that shouldn't I nah I, I won't people okay. probably know of it Marietta Mill Ghost story. Dead girl in a blue dress haunts the this abandoned mill. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few videos on it actually. That's yeah, the Kia Mill. Yeah. Um and the odd part about it too is that across the street from it there's this big open dirt lot. Mm -hmm. And then um on the other side of that lot there's another street with like houses. So like imagine that the old town is here. And then you come out on a side street, and it goes all the way down into the hills. But about, but hereabouts, there's another neighborhood. But it kind of makes this odd loop around this dirt lot with other ruins and the mill. Because these ruins look like something out of an old Catholic uh, uh, mission or something. Mm -hmm. And I can say, and I've and since I've been to all twenty-one of the California missions, oh. I, I can say it's it's. It's a little disconcerting how similar it looks to it as far as construction style, but it's so, like, destroyed and, like, graffitied on. You'd think there's, like, a hundred ghost stories with it. Um, but way across from it is the mill, which people have tried to get into and, like, destroyed the no trespassing sign. The fence has been beaten down. So in eight, yeah, here, in 1818, a mill was built in Marietta. It was intended for local farmers to be able to buy grain in bulk, and it was successful up until the early 70s. And it never fully recovered from this fire, which explains the blackened building, I guess. Um, and then was boarded up in 91. Um, so it's like, it's the haunted house of Marietta, as it were, because every town has their haunted house, I suppose. <laughs> um, so like supposedly according to the story there's like this little girl in a blue dress that he sees from the window and he enters the building and can't find her anywhere he just enters the building like through through the he just sneaks through the fence or something with a headlamp mm -hmm. and there's debates about whether or not it actually happened because supposedly some people claim there's not actually stairs to it anymore but um uh, nobody's ever, nobody's ever actually been inside to like confirm nothing. I don't believe. Um, so yeah, he, he, it's it's kind of typical ghost story stuff of like faint girlish giggles and uh, just typical like you know campfire story stuff. It's not very um, engaging. You know what? This but stuff... it's nice for a story of a little town. Yeah, I like this stuff because personally, I never really grew up around an area with stuff like that because I either live like way out in the country or like in the middle of a city, like in the suburbs. So I've never gone stuff like that. So I find that stuff cool. Uh, <laughs> um, the only real ghost story thing I've experienced is I got to go to the Winchester Mansion a while ago, like a really long time ago. Oh. Winchester Mansion. Yeah, so suppose so basically it is the guy the Winchester rifle, which is like the really famous gun, killed a lot of people. So the story goes is that the house is supposedly haunted by everyone who got killed by a Winchester rifle. Or something ah, along okay. those lines. To the point whenever the husband died, his wife was constantly building and like creating traps. For the spirits, so they couldn't find her. And, and just strictly speaking, taking the ghost out story out of it, it's a really interesting building to go to because there's quite legitimately stairs that lead nowhere, um, windows where you can look down on the servants' quarters, but they can't see you. 
um, there's doors oh. that literally open out to the outside to like a 15 foot drop. Like it's just genuinely <laughs> a really interesting place to just go. So it's basically an architectural massacre. Yeah, it, honestly, it, it which really is weird because I'm I'm looking at pictures of it like from like a realtor perspective or something, and it looks like a really nice house. It does from the outside, and like the inside, it looks nice. It's just weird. There's just like weird construction around it, and windows inside the house. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, what in the world? A toilet with a window for a nurse to check in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's some... Okay, then. Yeah, this aerial view looks really nice. That's a nice house. But it just... It's just a terribly built house, according to, like, placement of uh, yeah. other stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't... Experience... Stare to nowhere. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. That's so weird. Dude. It's a really it interesting that's... place. <laughs> Stairs that lead to nowhere just give me the weirdest feeling, though. Like, they shouldn't really scare me that much, but it's like... Mm, I don't know. Yeah, there's just something, something about weird. Just picks at my brain wrong. It's like the... Have you heard of the stairs in the middle of nowhere? I think so? I don't know. Stuff like that is always really interesting to me. It's like, it's so eerie. It's so weirdly eerie, because objectively speaking... It's not really all that odd, but just what, the, the stairs in the woods. Yeah, stairs in the woods. Just the fact that yeah, stuff like that exists is weird. Regardless of any like supernatural or scary stuff around it, I just find that stuff eerie. Well, it would be less weird if you knew like at least one thing about it, like who built it or when it was yeah. built. But the fact that it's just there and there's no explanation for it anywhere to be found. It gives off that unsettling vibe naturally to a lot of people, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, before I get on to what I really want to talk about here, I didn't experience anything at the Winchester Mansion, but my really good friends who live next door to me, um, they have this picture of the dad basically like standing in front of... I can't remember if it's like a window, but it's like just this dark frame, and there's like five photos, and four of them are just normal, but there's one where there's like a face in the frame, but it's not in any of the other photos, and it was taken in rapid succession. So that's weird. Weird stuff like that happens quite a lot. I have heard of I have heard of stories like those in other places from other family members. I think that's weird. That is weird. And like this is one of the it things. Makes you wonder, like, yeah, I, I saw the photo. Like it. It's genuinely weird because it, you can quite clearly tell that all the photos are in rapid suggestion. Yeah, are they blurry at all? Not like, really. That's the thing too. Oh wow! <laughs> hmm. Like it's just weird. Like once again, I'm a natural skeptic, so I'm willing to believe there's a logical explanation. But <coughs> heck, I don't have one. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's a practical joke. Maybe. So. Or maybe ghosts really do exist. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the real reason. So what I really want to talk about is this. <coughs> ah, sorry. I'm getting over a cold. No, it's all good. There's I this weird branch of pseudoscience. And I know people are immediately put off by su the word pseudoscience. But trust me, this one is actually interesting. And it's kind of a catch-22, because the thing about it is it's called cryptozoology. And it's a pseudoscience because it doesn't follow the scientific method. And I, I completely admit that. Everything in here is basically unprovable. And as soon as it becomes provable, it just goes into zoology. <coughs> so this is why it's a weird pseudoscience. Because the entire purpose is anything that's studied by it is inherently unprovable because if it is provable it just becomes normal biological zoology so it's right. this kind of catch-22 where there are there are certain creatures who were either thought to be extinct or um just thought weren't to exist 
that cryptozoology talked about that have been proven to exist. Things like the giant squid was originally a cryptid. No one, there was no proof for it existing other than, you know, little facts here and there and stories from sailors. So when they did find yeah. it, it just becomes part of zoology. It's just an animal. <coughs> right. Because now it officially actually exists, you know? Right. So, cryptozoology is a pseudoscience, but it's not wholly false. It's just things that we don't have the ability to prove right now. Now, some of them are more likely than other ones. Like, this, this is one of the more famous ones, so I want to start off with this. It's the Jersey Devil. The one I haven't heard of. Um, so okay. basically, the Jersey Devil is a folklore story from, shockingly, New Jersey. Um, <laughs> what a surprise. Exactly. So it's this idea that back in the uh, 1700s, in 1735, a Quaker woman gave birth to a child during a thunderstorm. And some believed her to be a sorceress, um, because, yes... I don't know the because reason why. I don't know if there is a reason yes. why. Kid plus lightning equals witch. Right. So some it's say... It's common sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were born in a lightning storm? Sorry, you're folklore now. So here's personally what I think. I think this happened because onlookers were to say that the child was worm deformed. So personally, what I think happened was there was a child who was born that had some sort of deformity and it just kind of went on from there, just kind of roll into this bigger mythos. But mm -hmm. so it was said to be deformed. And so some thought it was cursed. Um, other accounts said he was the literal son of the devil. Well, Once again, is. bit of a leap, but <laughs> you know, that's how it goes. So it's said to be this creature with the head of a horse, um, cloven feet, a thick tail, and like wings. And yeah, it, I've got one of the old sketches of it up right now. Yeah. So it's interesting stuff like this. And that's not the only story. There's other stories about like a girl falling in love with a British soldier and, you know how dare you fall in love with the British? So that child is now the devil. So there's a lot of different stories, but basically this folklore in New Jersey where this Jersey devil has been thought spotted. I think there's some photos and some videos as well. Won't oh, come. Oh, oh, oh. Specifically the 13th child of this woman, right? Because 13 is that unlucky number, right? From yeah. back in the old days. <laughs> Actually, interesting fact, there's certain buildings that don't actually have a 13th floor. You can find weird stuff like that in some of the cities, even newer ones, where they like won't build a 13th floor and they'll just skip over it. Weird Why? stuff. Just because superstition. Wait, what do you mean skip over it? Like it just goes from 12 to 14 on the elevator yeah. buttons? I've never what? seen one, but I've been told they exist. I'm gonna assume I've never been to this. a building that has more than five floors, so yeah, right, neither have I really. I so <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to a building that long, so I don't know. That's really weird. Though to be fair, that thirteen thing sounds like the whole six 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 the controversy thing, right? Yeah. Like if you're patching in, if you're patching in the synth sound, that's like the preset six six six. It's all of a sudden like this bad sound. Yeah, play metal music <laughs> backwards, and terrible things happen because. Play any song backwards, dude. There's Voices like backwards just thing. sound weird. Like that's that's the point. It's backwards. That is the point, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Though you control, you control hard with it too by yeah. being like weirdly. Like I know this is a side topic, but one of the composers I really like in video games, he he threw in these um, satanic symbols on a spectrograph over the audio files just to make it just to make it fit more with the game it was doom oh yeah and so mick gordon had this this part that was like perfect for certain symbols and certain numbers right and it actually 
he made it sound the exact way he wanted it to. And it, it's like a really good track, in my opinion. And there were so many hate articles on it. My gosh, from all these, like, you know, these Christians that sound like Southern Baptists or something <laughs> with that weird voice that's just like, it, yeah. But then in the same soundtrack, actually, in like the next song, in the next audio file that plays in the game, there's this drone that if you play backwards, says very distinctly, Jesus loves you. <laughs> so, so you control really hard with stuff like that. And it's just really funny. So like maybe, maybe, I don't know, build a building and have just 13 floors. <laughs> just 13 floors. like <laughs> Just to troll. Let's see what happens to that. Build building. it on a fault line. Just be like, do it. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> just to see who buys into that. Exactly. <laughs> oh, it's great. Anyways, that was a whole sidebar totally unrelated. I won't, sorry. You know what? We're just talking about scary things today. I don't know why. Yes. This is fun. <laughs> I like this kind of thing. All right. So let's talk about some more. So let's talk about what is honestly one of my favorite cryptids. Not for any good reason. I just think its name is funny, which is the Chupacabra, which is only funny ah, yeah. because directly translated to English, it literally means goat sucker <laughs> it sounds so scary but in english it is just directly goat sucker okay. so <laughs> okay wow that is yeah that's that's really intimidating bro yeah <laughs> so basically this is kind of like it, it's similar to the cow mutilation stories if you've heard those is basically farmers oh, um wake up to see um like their cat i don't think it was necessarily their cattle but their livestock dead and basically drained of its blood which is weird because animals don't usually do that they usually eat it yeah so it originated in mexico and it was kind of a legend for a while and recently i say recently uh recently as in like the late 1900s there's more and more reports of basically animals dying, their blood is drained. In the 70s. Yeah, and reported sites of this weird animal walking around. And you can find this all over Latin America, um, south, uh, not the south, but like the southwest United States and places like Puerto Rico. Um, and it's weird because there's basically two descriptions of it. One is it's very canine, like a dog. And then the other is it is like a lizard alien, which are so different, and I am so I, confused as to how they are the same thing. The first image I pulled up is literally the hybrid of what you just said, both, <laughs> with that silly mask. Or is that his actual face? I have no idea. Right. It, stuff like that is so... I don't know. It's the interesting. Fact that people like, genuinely believe that something happened. It's like it, it to me it kind of reminds me of like ancient times when people would construct, you know, the Greek gods and such as the explanations for all the things they just didn't know that they didn't know. It's right. like the it, 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 on the one hand like it, you could be like genuinely believing in something and on the other hand it's like yeah, okay. Right, and this is the thing about cryptozoology, is I don't necessarily believe it. I just find it really fun and really interesting, because yeah. there's a lot of weird stories. Like, some of the stuff right. is provable. Like, police showed up and were like, yeah, these these livestocks are, like, intact. They've been drained of blood. Like, that stuff happens. But everything else is just fine. And weird, yeah. yeah. So it's like, we don't know why, so we create these stories around it. And, you yeah. know, people are, you know, susceptible. But I, I think everyone at some point in their life meets somebody who has, like, a story of seeing <sighs> something while they're walking around in the, in the woods one day. And I just find Everybody's stuff Everybody's like got a story about something, dude. Exactly. And it's weird. And I, I think it's just interesting because I guess this is a segue into something that I find really interesting. The most famous cryptid... Bigfoot. Ah. Now, this is interesting, because I, I am from Washington State, the great evergreen state, and we're interesting because 
I kid you not, this is real. The military of the govern of the government of Washington State website has an article on Bigfoot. It has a dot gov tag and all. I kid you not, this is real. As well as two counties Why? count Bigfoot as an endangered species. What? <laughs> what? Wait, really? This is this is true. And this, this is legit? Yes. Oh my god. Because most states will be like, yeah, we got some cool cryptids. And then Washington State is like, he is a real, he is a threat to us, and we need to make sure that we know where he is. And it's oh hilarious. Uh, <laughs> wow. That is... That is the weirdest thing. Uh-huh. Now, I will say, Bigfoot is interesting because... A, there's just a lot of stories about him, uh, just more so than really any other creature, and it's it's across the United States. It's actually across the world, and specifically Washington State. It, and this is what interesting. It's a hotbed for it. But if you ever get the chance to go to the Pacific Northwest, um, like it might seem silly that like you know there's a big ape man wandering around the wilderness that we haven't found. Like, objectively speaking, well, that does sound silly. But that does sound pretty silly, yeah. If you go up to the Pacific Northwest, there are times where you can be driving at night, and it just hits you that you can't see more than 10 feet into the woods. In broad daylight, 20 feet into the wood can be completely obscured. Are your woods that thick? Yeah. It's, it's like, really Jeez. thick, and it's... It's weird, man. Like, like there is genuinely like just a lot of wilderness. So this is well, something I mean, to the Pacific Northwest. Is there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings, and I don't necessarily believe in Bigfoot. I believe in the possibility of Bigfoot. Oh, it's tree shadows, dude. Then again, I can't say much because I have my own weird instances of strange sightings out here in the desert of Southern California. Right, and there's stuff like that. I know I know guys who have their own crazy ghost stories from like desert mirages or something. I have I have completely different stories like that. And I have uh, and I have been, never actually been to a uh, like real forest, I suppose you could say. Even still 20 feet in just in broad daylight, that's pretty thick. It it, it is. It's it's something that you really got to see. Um Maybe I'll see it when we when I was visit there in the summer. You maybe probably will. It, it's it's all maybe over we, the place. Maybe I can just go look for Bigfoot. As part of <laughs> Let's <summer>. go, bro. <laughs> so that'd be fun. So there's a lot of stories about Bigfoot. And I ever say, if you just want a fun rabbit hole to find down on YouTube, just look up people who talk about Bigfoot and Bigfoot sightings. It's genuinely interesting. Um, another thing about Bigfoot is that unlike a lot of the stuff we've talked about, it's in no way a modern legend. There's stories of this going back to the native people from this area, which is impressive. Once again, I don't necessarily believe Bigfoot exists, but I believe in the possibility, and I just think it's a cool idea. Like, imagine Everybody how much... Just slap in the face that would be to modern man. That's like you've got a big furry ape wandering around your woods, and you don't even know, you don't even see him. And I mean, I mean, with woods that thick, that is a little um, disconcerting. Right, and if you work. think about it, lots of people live in the country, and if you live in the country, you actually know that seeing wild animals can sometimes be a rarity. Like animals are surprisingly good at avoiding people. Um, like yeah. deer and stuff, they're pretty hard to find a lot of the times. I think hunters too yeah. can know this, is that like, they're pretty good at hiding. And Very another good, interesting yes. thing is grizzly bears. We know they die. We know they exist. But it's super hard to find any bones. Which is really weird. Like, it is noticeably hard to find any grizzly bear bones. So once again, stuff like that leads believers. You probably to have more bones from the mountain lions down here than you do with bears up there. 
Yeah, probably. And so it's just interesting stuff like that. Once again, if you want to find an interesting rabbit hole, I would say fold down it because it's one of those things where it's like, I don't think there's any evidence that exists right now that can convince me it's real. But there's also a lot of evidence that is like, you can't figure out a reason why it's false. Like, there's just some stuff that doesn't make sense. Once again, not necessarily a believer. I think it's just interesting. And I like falling down these robot not these robots loop <laughs> rabbit holes at like twelve o'clock at night. Robot hills. That's yeah, robot say. hills. <laughs> I mean, this is it's interesting to think about and it's stuff that would like scare some smaller children i guess but for for me it's it's not necessarily intimidating honestly i don't know i used to i used to find that kind of thing interesting and i kind of fell down into the sub rabbit hole that is that for video games Mm -hmm. and movies i suppose oh yeah so like i just the rabbit holes i fall down typically have to do with weird game sightings like unused textures or Mm-hmm. Or or um, puzzles within games like the Cicada three three zero one mystery, if you know mm-hmm. what that is. Yeah. And so um, I don't know. I don't want to say that this kind of thing ever really bored me. Um, I just typically got bored of there not being any conclusive evidence to prove to me that it existed. I you I used to get really tired believing in just a possibility mm-hmm. because if it's just a possibility I never really thought there was much to believe in and like to an extent I still don't because I don't seriously believe in it but I get what you mean when you talk about how um there's there's evidence such that you can't figure you can't f- figure out how to disprove it yeah, and I understand the people that get bored of it. Once I, I completely understand that and get that. Um, I know for a lot of people, stuff like that isn't interesting because it's like it it doesn't go anywhere, which is fair. I just like imagining the possibilities of stuff, which is stuff like I find stuff like this very interesting. And you know what? I'm a wimp, so this stuff at twelve a.m. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to watch this and I'm going to be scared because I make good life decisions. I ain't sleeping tonight, but that's fine. I exactly. chose this. <laughs> and of course, it's also cool to find just some genuinely hilarious fakes that are just so clearly staged that it's comical. Like somebody like did UFO this and was like, dude. yeah, I could pass this off to be real. <laughs> yeah, and then it becomes a total meme. It's yeah, like those UFO sightings that you hear of every now and then. Yeah, that's weird too. UFOs are kind of under cryptozoology, and I always find that weird. Like it's if... <laughs> it's it is on a technicality. It's not because it's not really anything like organic, I suppose you could say. But it's under a technicality, you could argue that it's in cryptozoology just because you don't. Um, you don't really know what know. it is. Yeah. Yeah, you don't really know what it is. You have no evidence to prove or disprove it. You've got, like, cruddy evidence at best because you've got low quality stuff. You have. Area 51 isn't sharing their secrets, so. <laughs> okay, I will say that Area 51 is just an interesting thing. Once again, sometimes it just leads you to genuinely interesting stuff. Because Area 51 yeah. as a secret military base is, like, correct. And it's actually interesting to research some of the stuff that they were doing. Um, because a lot of the alien sightings over Area 51, the military has actually confirmed was just them trying out stealth fighters. Yeah. So stuff like that is also interesting. Like, just... On its own, it's a pretty interesting thing to look into. Yeah. Um, it, it, like, that kind of thing. That kind of thing is pretty. Uh, uh, it, it. It's thinking about thinking about what the what the military does in their secret bases that like nobody knows what they're doing kind of weirds me out. But like, eh. <laughs> yeah. 
It's not the it's not the most interesting thing in the world for me. Honestly, I get more I get more hyped up over a stinking creepy pasta more than anything else. <laughs> I'm very easily entertained, as you probably already know. Dude, that's fair. Creep of creepy pastas are their own cool thing. We should do a Halloween video on stuff like that. <laughs> I actually find that stuff pretty cool. Yeah, there was there was this one video. There was this one video I was watching actually about why why so many creepy pastas that exist actually strike genuine terror the way they do, and it has to do with the fact that they that the game actually does um, break the fourth wall in mm -hmm. very sneaky senses. Like some old games actually somehow were capable of reading the history of your console and like the in-game, like the in-game, um, the character you were interacting with was like, ah, you like Castlevania, don't you? And you're like, how in the world did you know that? And then, like, there's stuff that, like, if you chose some bad option in the game, you reset the game or delete the file, and the game knows that you deleted the file <laughs> and it'll come back. And then it spawns other creepypastas that are, like, totally dumb. But that's the kind of thing that entertains me a little more than, um, like, creatures that may or may not exist. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, but I think there's a similar psychological effect that happens... Which is why I don't, like, discredit it entirely, and I'm not like, oh, it's just boring or something. It, I, I think they're, like, kind of related, in a sense. At least to what they do to the brain. It's like, oh, oh, shoot. That kind of thing, you know? It's, it, it kind of, not that it wakes you up, but it kind of, um, not that it makes you more self-aware either. I'm not sure, I'm not sure quite how to say it, but there's something about them... There's something about those two things that I think they're related. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think, like, the entire, like, aliens, like, cryptids, like, creepypasta, I think they're all fairly similar in the way they operate. Um, yeah. I mean, not exactly. Of course, there's big differences, but I, I, I agree. They, they are very similar. Yeah. And granted, you can tell... You can... You can wave all of your cryptozoology stuff off or all the creepypasta pasta stuff off like it's just formulaic stories like how everything all mystery stories are basically the same now like it's a formula and this and that and the other thing and it's like yeah but yeah you know, <laughs> i don't know people doesn't mean it can't be executed well you know? right because <laughs> cliches and formula are not necessarily bad things it's just that they tend to be made badly because they're well, just like a cliche is a badly is a bad representation of the formula true okay fair i'll because give it's you that. just because it just appeals to the stereotypes and then like cranks it up to everything up to 100 and you're just like why we have <laughs> this other thing that actually doesn't insult my intelligence you know yeah yeah no i i, I agree yeah formula formulas can be done well <laughs> I mean, there's plenty of things that people really like that are formulas. I yeah. mean, heck, the original trilogy of Star Wars was basically a samurai movie. And oh, yeah. That was done fine for people. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's totally... It, it is so oh. typical that it is literally the, the prime example that modern-day modern storytellers will use to discuss the hero's journey. The, a New Hope is like the the prime example of that now and yeah like and and like people can say that like it's overrated or something but there's an element of the influence of it because of certain elements of the fact that it's sci-fi and it's so new and different that it makes you wonder how they're going to execute this formula properly and they do it perfectly so there's a reason why it's still timeless that's yeah that's like the perfect example for the formula is appealing well. It still appeals well to a mass generation. I mean, my siblings watched Star Wars the other day for like the billionth time in my house, and they still love it. <laughs> I've been watching that movie since I was two. They're watching it now, and they're like two and three. And, it, and it's just as appealing to them as it was to me when I was that age. It's like, there's a reason why stuff sticks around, I guess. 
Yeah. I... And same with some of these crazy legends. They're crazy, like this Bigfoot stuff. The, there's a reason why they stick around. Heck if I know, but they stick around. They do stick around. All right, so getting slightly more back on track, there's a few other things that I want to talk about. And I'm sorry, this, I pulled that off a little bit. Yeah, I, I, it's a smooth transition. And these are just stuff that I find interesting. <clears throat> so this is something that generally to the day still unnerves me. And it's just, it's literally just because of how um, the popular vision imagines them. And you probably, you've, even if you're not aware of the story, you've probably seen the image before of the Flatwood Monsters. Um, Say that again, Flatwood Monsters? Flatwood Monsters. So, the story goes is that basically, it's kind of late one night in West Virginia... Um, it's not really important that it's in West Virginia, but it's very important that's West Virginia. Um, so these two brothers, they they're hanging out with their friend, right? And they see this bright object shoot across the sky. I know this sounds weird, <laughs> but what, so anyway, that a shooting star, <laughs> uh, probably to be honest. But they s reportedly uh, see it land on the property of a local farmer. So, you know, boys boys will be boys and go investigate the meteor that <laughs> fell from space. Well, yeah. Why would you not? <laughs> yeah. That's intriguing, dude. <laughs> so, they go um well, for they go to the home of an adult apparently, which is way more responsible than I think I would have been. Shout out to the boys being boys. That's <laughs> Yeah. This is boys being girls. That doesn't make any sense, <laughs> but yeah. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Going no, to no. an adult's Let's house. Let's go back to the original idea. Cringe. I don't like that. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> so they go. So basically a group of them go to this crash thing in this farmer's field. So they reach a top of a hill, and then they see this pulsating red light. And then they aim a flashlight at it, and they reportedly saw a tall man-like figure with a round red face surrounded by a pointed hood-like shape. And so basically I've, that's how the story goes, and I think there's a few other reported sightings of seeing those creatures around. And if I remember correctly, it was most likely just an owl. Um, because owls can have weird property like that with the eyes. But just the yeah. artist's rendition of it um, if any, if you're listening to this, just look it up. Just the Flatwood Monsters. I am looking at the images right now. Yeah. Not gonna lie, it straight up looks like something out of a nightmare I had like a week ago. Yeah. No. I. I. I swear I, to you, I, I'm pretty sure I dreamed about that. Ooh. I dislike it so much. Like. <laughs> it looks on a, on a certain level, though. I have to say, no, I don't have to say it, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It looks kind of beautiful and it looks it, it looks almost believable um and this is like a totally stupid reason for most people but for me i find that this creature actually possibly could have existed because it's symmetrical it's designed like perfectly yeah it, it, it throws me off just enough to where it's like i am pretty sure i know of a few other horror stuff that takes influence from from the very notion of this creature existing. Yeah. Ooh. And now I can see why. It's not just... It, it's not... It, it doesn't look typical. Yeah. It, it, it hits the straight nerve as me. So I'm going to confess something. And people are going to laugh at me for this. But I freaking hate apes so much. Some smaller ones like monkeys I'm fine with. But... I can't explain it exactly, but just the way they look freaks me out so much. <laughs> apes. Not gorillas, apes. Not necessarily gorillas. I'm actually fine with gorillas, but yeah, there's certain apes is that just their predatory eyes and their human-like face that lacks any, like, notion of an actual human face. I don't know what it is, but they freak me out so much. <laughs> That's fair. They honestly... Uh, they look like what would happen if a man didn't shave anywhere and lived a thousand years. 
Yeah. And and to it's... F- no, go ahead. Uh, I I was just gonna say it's also like for me it's also their eyes because they look similar to it's kind of like it's kind of like seeing a human. But if it was just completely animal, like there was no rationality behind it, it just kind of has that really predatory look that it's like similar to human, but not quite. And it's just enough that it freaks me out. So stuff like the Flatwood monster that vaguely resemble human, but isn't quite just freaks me out. I don't know what it is. And I... I respect the fact that me being scared of apes because of that is funny and ridiculous because it is. But stuff like I that, mean, it, it just it's uncanny valley. <clears throat> stuff that looks human but you can tell isn't. I'm not okay yeah. with it. Yeah. Well, and then there's other like derivatives of stuff that that try too hard to the point where they don't look human and then it just looks cliche, right? But yeah. that kind of thing. Actually, no, I, I won't laugh at you for that, honestly. And and I'm not saying that to be, like, nice or anything. It's like <laughs> there's a rationale to be... There's something to be said for for your distinction, like, with the with the ape, with the ape's eyes and the, the vague human resemblance. And it's vague enough, but also not vague enough. And it's that fine line that just sets you off yeah if that there's there's something to be said for that like that's an actual thing and i i'll respect that i probably have something like that too but i don't know what that is <laughs> I, like i'm not thinking about it right now apes yeah. never bother me because i've never seen them before i've seen like other monkeys in zoos or something but i don't think i've seen apes it's just weird though yeah i don't, I don't, I don't like them just because they're weird <laughs> strange they're just yeah strange creatures like these are the things that we descended from really well then why are they still here i don't know they're just Uh, yeah it's strange um to be honest that's that's a lot of my um things that i had to talk about but i i think we can talk about a bit more yeah um, so that Flatwood Monsters thing. I'm still, I'm still trying to get over that because I'm still looking at that image right now, and it's like, whew, that 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 doesn't that doesn't look very pretty to me. Yeah, no. Uh, and the weird thing is, I had the same thing you had. Is whenever I first saw that photo, and I'm fairly sure this comes from me because I think I've seen like renditions of it in other media because I know it's fairly popular um, to base horror things off. But just looking at it, I'm like, I swear I've seen something like that before. But I don't know where, and that also kind of unnerves me. Like, Oh, cause... absolutely. No, you know what it reminds me of? Oh, hey, actually, there's a there's an image right here of, of uh, a split image of the, the uh, what is it? The Flatwood Monster on an owl standing over a bush. So it's like, oh, maybe it was an owl, yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, but it's like, the, yeah, I, oh my gosh, there's probably a bunch of really good animations out there of this horrendous looking creature. Yeah, oh my gosh, it looks, it's, it's so perfectly designed. It's setting me off weird now, dude. Jeez, I'd, I'd hate to have audio of whatever noise that thing makes running, running right now. Oh, that would but be terrifying. Why did you put that thought I in feel, my head? <laughs> I feel like this is something that Slenderman was based off of. Not gonna it lie. Might have been. Because Slenderman, like this character, is vaguely human. But I think the thing that irritates me the most about this Flatwood monster isn't that it's just vaguely human and it's got like this this like T Rex kind of arm pose <laughs> or something. Um well, first of all, there's barely nose. There's no mouth. You can you can kind of construe that there's eyebrows in some images, but there's just eyes. There's this pointed head thing that looks like it should be the headdress for some kind of nun, except it's brutalized. Mm-hmm. And the whole demeanor of it, the scariest part for me, honestly, is that it looks female. <laughs> I don't know why that's 
the thing that bothers me the most. <laughs> Daniel is scared really, of a woman. <laughs> no, it, it just really, it just really sets me off. It's not, it's not something I can, it's not even something I can physically relate to. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's nothing there for me. It's so, it's so weird. Jeez, you brought this up. You jumped, you brought this up at a great time. Now I'm going to be thinking about this for the whole night. I ain't <laughs> sleeping now, dude. Thanks a lot. You're welcome, <laughs> bro. It's what I'm here for. <laughs> it's why I love stuff like this. I have some weird... I, Because I'm a wimp for horror, and I have some weird fascination with falling down stuff like this late at night. And I'm like, I know it doesn't help me. I know it's objectively terrible to do. But I'm going to click on this video. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very good for your psyche, bro. Uh, no, not really, but I still do say. it. <laughs> yeah, and then you wonder why your dreams are so bad, like myself. I mean, I had to stink and get off certain meme videos because the audio of them actually was affecting my dreams. I, <laughs> it's, not, it's not good to go that far down, but... It, this is kind of, it, on a surface level, it is kind of funny to uh, think about. Dude, Why dreams are heckin' weird. Virginia? I it's used to West lucid Virginia. dream, and I still do sometimes. And honestly, the strangest part of lucid dreaming is having a conversation with someone in your dream. Because it's oh. like, you know this is objectively just yourself. But, oh yeah, no, I I do that. Like that's every dream I have. I'm a lucid dreamer. It's so I weird. I talk, I talk to people in my dreams, and they're not. At the end, I can eventually tell that they're not real people because they're actually just reflections of my own head, mm -hmm. which is on it. Which is actually the inspiration for the characters in this book I'm quote unquote writing. Oh. Is that they're all a certain part of me, mm -hmm. and they're all in this team and they all form to basically become me in a sense there's no real meaning for that but it's mm -hmm. but it comes from my dreams because nobody actually talks correctly like i've had dreams talking with um you and people that we both know mm -hmm. um like in a group setting and like everyone sounds off and and by the time I and the, the when I actually realize that, the dream's over. Yeah. So I can't actually like do anything with it. It's like, oh great, I figured it out. Now, now I'm awake because that's what I get for figuring it out. I grew I grew too conscious. I will say that is one of the things that personally for me was hard whenever I would lucid dream, is because there's a point at least with how it worked for me, is there would come a point. Where there is genuine panic, because in a lucid dream, usually you can stop dreaming whenever you realize it's a dream. The problem with lucid dreaming is that that doesn't happen. So yeah. there's no real stop until you and the real world wake up. So there's this weird time where it feels like you're genuinely trapped in your own mind. Which is just weird yeah. feeling to have. Oh, I've experienced the pain of uh, crashing the car into a lamppost. And then I wake up, and then it's just gone. And I'm shaking in my bed, and I'm like, what in the world just happened? Dude. But it, like, it felt so real that I actually was experiencing pain. For a brief moment and then i realize it's all in my head and i'm like oh my gosh i i'm so scared of myself Jeez. <laughs> dude ever since i start driving i just the only dreams i have is just where my car breaks go oops not gonna work <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that still scares me i and i just got my license mm -hmm. right so i i just started driving by myself now and it's honestly a the most relieving experience and b the most terrifying experience because <laughs> there's nobody there next to me to to tell me that there's a semi passing and i can't see their blinker and they're about to run me off the road because <laughs> that did happen oh gosh Bro. that was not fun 
Anyways. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I will say, if you ever get the chance, honestly, I need to do this. You just need to go driving at night in certain places and realize how terrifying the world is. <laughs> like... I don't want to drive alone at night, dude. It's hard to quantify certain things. Like, one time I was driving across the U.S., and I don't remember what state I was in. It's one of the western states... We weren't in the middle of nowhere, nowhere, because there was, like, farms, but it was the bright harvest moon just laid out over this farmland. Like, it was nearly bright as day. And that is simultaneously oh, yeah. one of the eeriest and coolest experiences I've ever had. Oh, dude. Oh, those are the best. I, ah, oh, dude, I find that so beautiful. The full moon just just lighting up, and like I have those experiences camping out in the, in the desert because I've camped out in the desert sometimes, <laughs> and you've either, the the two experiences you can have out in the desert is either you've got this full moon, that just kills all the stars but lights up the entire landscape like it's day, because there's nobody out there, and mm -hmm. if you're out in like, uh 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 like Joshua Tree or something, it's just flat, mm -hmm. um. Or there's no moon and it's just stars in the galaxies, and it's like, it's it is kind of eerie, but I'm honestly more fascinated by just how beautiful it is. Yeah, yeah, it's, I feel that. Because there's nothing beautiful about the sun plus sand. <laughs> there's nothing. There is that nothing is true. Beautiful about that. <laughs> it's so freaking hot. <laughs> that is one thing I say that I don't like about um texas the light pollution is so horrible in some places like you can't see stars at all and that makes me sad <laughs> i like stars yeah oh dude i mean i would say you should come out here but like on even on some days you can't really see me well there's more stars here though than i've seen in any other place i've lived in um but then, of course, our ranch friend would probably say to come out to the ranch. And, of course, there's probably going to be, like, stars and galaxies for days because, you know, out there in the middle of nowhere is the best place to see so many of them. Yeah. A <laughs> car wrecked on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. It's quite interesting. It, it really is. Oh, I The what? Hold up. Sorry, you're lagging out for me. Give it a second. All right. Back. Okay. Yeah, okay, we're back. All right, back. cool. All right, cool. The cop. <laughs> <laughs> that happened. Uh, anything yeah. else that I got here? I sidetracked us onto an actually pleasant topic to deter from all How the dare you? scary stuff. <laughs> I wanted to share the insanity of my something. state and how obsessed it is with Bigfoot. <laughs> well, then we got into dreams and this, uh, how scary lucid dreaming can be. Which mm. is honestly its own thing. And that, and, oh man, we could have, we could have our own, like, half hour, hour and a half discussion about that. Dude, I'd be down to do that at some point, because I have weird dream experiences. I had for about yeah. a year... A whole freaking like TV series in my head. I kid you not. Continued <laughs> storylines, the same consistent setting, for like an entire year. It was the strangest thing. And then one day yeah, I was same. talking to my friends about that at the playground, and they're like, "Miguel, are you okay? That's not normal." <laughs> Sorry, there's lag. Hold on. It's it's all good. Is it good now? Is it? Your audio cut out, and then your video had a hard time catching up, so Ooh, I don't know. Good. Can you hear me But now? it's back now. All right. Yeah, no, no, no. It's all good now. It's just that your audio was trying to catch up with video, but the video was stuck. <laughs> So your video was trying to catch up to audio that was catching up to something. Who knows what? Who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, I have... 
I have weird dream experiences. And then there are some that just, it's weird too, because I can say that I have had weird dream experiences, but then there's so many that I don't actually remember, but yeah. they're super vivid ones that I remember so well that I wrote them down. Mm -hmm. So I actually have a doc like That's filling smart. up with these dreams. It kind of reminds me about how they're just dreams, but at the same time, it's, it's interesting to study how, on the one hand, they could be a story, and how, on the other hand, they make no sense at all. I mean, to Like, be... for one thing... Mm -hmm. or, or, no, you go ahead. No, 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 you. No, you. Oh, okay. Well, basically, I was gonna say, <laughs> it's just really quick, dreams are super interesting, because realistically, dreams are just kind of the purest form of your mind doing whatever the heck it feels like. <laughs> like... Yep. I, I find that really of, interesting. There's an element of that, I believe, that you can experience during the day, but it's brief, and most people have more or less a control over it. Mm -hmm. um, there's these things that um, I like to call daymares, as it were, <laughs> because there's this one weird moment that just randomly happens where your mind... Um, takes you to this place that resembles a kind of nightmare, mm -hmm. but it's your imagination doing something and not the same, not the same part of your brain from where dreams occur. And uh -huh. I don't actually like have evidence to say that it's the same. It's not the same place in your brain, but, but it's something I just feel uh -huh. because it functions differently because I can actually get hung on that thought and it can haunt me for the rest of the week if it's bad enough. And it's just random, but it's, but it's brief and then it's gone. And then your mind is like, okay, it's up to you to dwell on it or not. <laughs> and most of the time I dwell on it because I'm like, wait, what just happened? I have to figure out what happened. And then I think about it too much. Dude, our minds are agree. stupid. <laughs> I will agree. Dreams are the purest form of, it's it's like looking inside. It's to, for me. It's always been like looking inside of your brain to figure out like how it runs as like a machine. Mm -hmm. But then your dreams are like really weird. So you're like, what kind of machine is this? It's a very broken machine, dude. I'm still dude, trying to convince my slow. brain to tell me where all my organs are. I know it knows, <laughs> <laughs> and it needs to tell me. <laughs> Wait, do you need to know where your organs are? I what need happens? to know. This is crucial information. I want to be able to sense inside of myself. My brain can do it, <laughs> but it won't let me. It, for some reason, well, thinks I'll like... You want to see your heart and intestines inside your mind's yeah. eye? Is that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I want to. I That's just it. want to. <laughs> no purpose. Meantime, meantime, my brain has the the weirdest things i've actually had dreams of rehashing certain moments that actually happened like that day mm -hmm. but from what i would say a different camera angle so there was a time where um i was camping with a few boys and then one of the adults puts the uh um the water on the fire or something like mm -hmm. one morning is just just douses the fire out right and there's this huge wall of smoke that happens, huge to me because I was small. And so me and all the boys, we just run up and we just bathe in the smoke and <laughs> ah, smoke. And then we start coughing and then we all smell like smoke. But then I had a dream that night from the opposite angle. So I watched myself run into the fire or run into the smoke. <laughs> Sorry. Into Take me fire. <laughs> Death. <laughs> no, I ran into the smoke and I could watch myself do it. I could see the expression on my face. And the weirdest thing is that even though I was watching myself from this stationary place, I could feel myself running. I could see, I could feel the expression on my face that I was seeing. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing. I have no explanation for it. It's the weirdest thing. It's so surreal. Yeah, I know. I've had things like that. I don't remember them exactly, but I know I've had things like that. It's super weird. Yes. Dreams are whack, bro. They are not based, that's for sure. That is true. 
dreams are very unbased. <laughs> that's that's kind of the definition of a dream. They're based. What's that? Where <laughs> they just go where they want to go, dude. Yeah, they're just like, all right, moving on. Dude, it's so yeah. weird. Minds themselves yeah. are weird. Minds, minds are the most brilliant things ever, and yet they can be so stupid. Yeah, they're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically just dis- you're basically just dissing people at this point because yeah, I am people <laughs> we are all stupid okay moral of the story if you take away anything from this episode is that people are stupid. people are stupid yeah <laughs> cryptozoologist like frick you you're stupid you're stupid <laughs> zoologist yeah. you're stupid <laughs> Just walks into like and I don't know where science people congregate. I assume observatories, but I doubt that like zoologists walk into a government building and say they're stupid or something. Yeah. Just (laughs) walk into Congress floor. You're all stupid. Leaves without explanation. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, wait, what just happened? So should I send security or not? Yeah, I wanna do stuff like that. Like I have this idea. Completely off topic, but I want to break into people's houses and just mess with them. Just move stuff around. No purpose. Just to mess with you. You think you know where the screwdriver is? No, you don't. I moved it. (laughs) Just don't do that at my house. We lose so many things already. (laughs) If you dared move one thing, my mom will have a tantrum, okay? (laughs) She has a hard enough time figuring out where the kids are. <laughs> you thought you had three kids? Psych. <laughs> oh, no. no. Now you have none. <laughs> They're gone. Where did no. they go? You'll never know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Straight up. If you could do that without getting caught, I, I would pay to see that. Honestly, I would pay to join that. I love doing I things totally like that. You, doing that. you know, so many people are malicious in their trolling, I just want to be mildly inconvenient. Like, I, I, I don't want to be mean. I'm just mildly inconvenient. That, in and of itself, is its own kind of malicious stuff. It is! It's, <laughs> it's great. It's like my little R. Oh, it's so funny. I will, you know, so, for those of you who don't know, um, which is basically nobody who watches this, um, Adventure Karma and I are meeting up in the summer, I'm going to his Washington house to hang with him for like two weeks or something. Absolutely. We should do that with the other people that are staying with us. You and I? And like, and so the people who are staying with us are going to be watching this and being like, wait, they're going to do what with us? And we're like, yeah, you know what we're going to do. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Yeah, you can't stop us. Let's How are you going to stop us? Everything. I will like, th- I will throw somebody's backpack up on the roof. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Seriously, so and then you'll do it to me, and then, and then <laughs> we'll just it. put everyone's backpacks on the roof. You don't get luxuries. <laughs> Let's all sleep on the roof, guys. Honestly, that's a terrible idea. I was about to say let's do that, but no. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I want to fall through a roof. Complete side tangent. So- I just want to fall through a ceiling. I just want to know what it's like. <laughs> okay. I'm just curious, bro. Like, I just want to know what um, it feels for just the floor to be gone. I mean, I may or may not have experienced something like that to a degree, but... Yeah. I have I such I weird desires. Be. Like it's never normal. It's like I want to fall through a roof just, just cause. Uh, just cause. Well, I know what falling that far feels like. I know it in my dreams because I fall off a cliff and then hit my head on a tree. On a tree. Like forget, bro. Forget you got bad aim. Off. You gotta smack <laughs> that boy on the concrete. <laughs> I know, I fall off of a cliff, but then the wind puts my head into a tree in the valley. It doesn't even hit the ground. And then I wake up, go back to sleep, and then I'm on the ground. And then a massive boulder hits my head, <laughs> and I'm blocking my head against the headrest of my bed. 
<laughs> because that happens. I think the dumbest thing I've ever done is I had a sensation where I was falling, and I managed to actually roll off the top bunk of my bed. Single dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> did you not have railings on that bed, or did you just like- I don't remember, because I know I fell, but I cannot for the life of me remember if I had railings or not. Because I want to say there was one point where I didn't have railings, and I think that's when that happened, but I don't know. I used to Dude, move I... so much in my sleep. I move around a lot in my sleep, and that's why I got a body pillow. It's actually been restricting my movement, and it's helping me not fall off the bed. <laughs> it's something to eat, so just like hug, or yeah. just put in between my legs, and all of a sudden it restricts all my movement, and it's like fine. Yeah, the railings on the top bunks of bunk bed are basically putting the walls up for bowling. I don't know why yeah. I just made that analogy, but that's how I'm going to describe it from now on. That's that's a fair assessment. I can roll with that. But then you've got to assume that the wall is... Assuming that you're like one of those people that puts the bed in the corner, the mm -hmm. wall is the other railing. And that's the railing that never like leaves, which is that's weird true. because that's not how it works in bowling at all. I'm sorry, but if you put your bed in the middle of the room, you are a psychopath. And I do that. <laughs> well, it okay, that depends on the room, though. Like, unironically, it depends on the room. Yeah, and the sure. Like, my parents put their bed in the exact middle of the room, and it's a massive room, so they can do that. So okay. It's like, it's if a you have, bedroom. If it's two people sleeping in the same bed, I understand it. And for certain rooms, I understand it. Like, I in this house, I have it set up like that, um, just because that flows better, and I have a nightstand, which is actually on the wrong side of the bed, so I barely use it, um, because I don't <laughs> well, sleep with anyone, so I just put junk on my bed, which is the proper use for a bed. Uh, it's storage <laughs> for both it's human and non-human things. Um, yeah. That works. But up in Washington, I have it against the wall. The wall is comfy. I see the meme that it's like facing the wall, which is comfort 100, danger 100. Facing outside, danger 0, comfortable. Danger facing 0, comfortability 0. I live by that, bro. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. So the footrest of the bed is up in the corner? No, the headrest is. Oh, well, the headrest fine. is I, I against the wall, and then the side is against a window, basically. It's in a corner. Oh, my bed is up against a window and a wall. Base, bro. I don't like the I, middle of the room. It's weird. I used to have terrible dreams as a, as a small kid about the wall being the worst place to sleep next to, because I would have dreamt that some monster would walk through... And with his giant leg, just kick the wall in, and I would be the first thing that it hits. And so I always wanted to sleep in the middle of the room. And now I'm, I just don't care. I don't care where you put me to sleep. I just want something. To sleep. Sigma male mindset. I don't care if a monster breaks down the wall. I'm sleeping against it. <laughs> I will protect the wall. I will keep the wall from falling. <laughs> just holding it up. It that is something be. I want to see in horror movies. Imagine you're like some Lovecraftian interdimensional being hunting a bunch of teenagers, and one of them just punches you in the face. How do you react? <laughs> Cthulhu just gets punched in the face. What are you going to do now, huh? And yeah. Cthulhu's like, I didn't think I'd get this far. <laughs> that would be hilarious. All right. I think we got to wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. That's a very random note to leave it on. But yeah, punching Cthulhu in the face. For... <laughs> that only the title of this video is uh, is uh, cryptozoology and punching Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see a thumbnail of just like me going insane. One of these times, it's just gonna be the title. It's just gonna be AK has gone insane rant. <laughs> And it's just an hour of me talking about something utterly random that I found. That'll be a podcast episode. One of these days, it's just going to be me listening like I'm some kind of therapist. And you're just going to go on, dude. This is where I'm going to start dumping my ideas that I don't turn into videos. <laughs> Great, I can turn them into videos. <laughs> <laughs> 
Exactly. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, man. thank you all for watching. I just gestured front facing into the camera, despite the fact that I've been using that to refer to Daniel. It's now you guys. <laughs> um, you're all you're all oh. in my computer. Fun fact: anyone who watches this, you don't exist. You're in my computer. Not like the data. You're just in it. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you're in it, but you don't exist. But exactly. In. Yeah. But you're not in there. You're just in there. Yeah. You're not in. You're in. You're in. You know yeah. I mean? Exactly. <laughs> there we go. All right. Goodbye, <laughs> computer munchkins. Thank you Later. for being here, Daniel. Um, it's been great. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to do this again. Yeah, we should be having more episodes. Yeah, hopefully with more guests, but who knows? Hopefully. But... In any event, like and subscribe to both of us. Yes. Uh, the bits will be on his channel, and Ooh. I don't know where you are. I'm just pointing over here. <laughs> yeah, bits will, bits be, on will be on channel. his channel. <laughs> <laughs> the full video will be on this link in the description. Right there. And with that... You get the link up in the card. I yeah. don't know where Hit the is. link up in the card in the description. Go check us Don't out. hit the dislike button. It doesn't work anymore. Yeah. What are you going to do? YouTube doesn't allow criticism. Ha. <laughs> now I don't know how well my video is doing. Joke's on you. Darn. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> goodbye. We'll goodbye, see you. Goodbye, internet peoples.